Hi, thanks for joining me today on Just Cook with Michael. Today we're going to make a classic recipe of mashed potatoes. There are eight key steps to making great mashed potatoes. After you learn these, you'll be able to make fantastic mashed potatoes every single time. To begin with, you need to pick the right potato. And for a fluffy potato, there's nothing better than the russet or the Idaho potato. Those are pretty much interchangeable. Russet potatoes are grown outside of Idaho. Usually when someone refers to an Idaho potato, it is a russet. But if it says Idaho, it has to be grown in Idaho. So we'll have our russet potatoes, some green onions for flavor and garnish, salt, pepper, fresh ground pepper, some heavy cream, some whole butter, some garlic, and some and a potato masher. Today we're going to use the russet because it is a mealy potato, it's starchy mealy potato. Unlike the little red potatoes, these are more what you call a waxy potato. And the same thing with the little fingerlings. There are also Yukon gold potatoes that are in between. They're halfway between a russet and a waxy potato. Some people choose to make their mashed potatoes out of these two. They just won't be as fluffy, but they do have great flavor. Basically, russets have uh, more starch and they have two kinds of starch. They have amylose starch and amylopectin starch. Now, the, the difference is the amylose starch, which is only present in the russet, it's a more linear form of starch, the chain. And so it breaks off the cells easier. Key structural differences are, again, the, the russet will, will tend to fall apart a little bit, which is great for mashed potatoes. It makes it super easy to mash them, super easy to incorporate flavors such as garlic and spices and salt. The waxy potatoes, they're a great choice if you want a potato that will not fall apart. So for some potato salads, you might want to keep the integrity of the potato. So you want to use like a little red potato or fingerling, or maybe if you're roasting potatoes and you want it to be a, you know, maintain its original shape, little red waxy potatoes are a great choice. So the second thing is to cube the potatoes. A uniform size allows you to cook the potatoes evenly. The third key aspect is to cook the potatoes starting off in cold water. That way the potatoes cook more evenly or else if you dump a bunch of potatoes in the hot water, the outside tends to cook first and kind of fluff off, especially with russets and then the interior is not quite done yet. I either like doing this right into a trash can or into a large bowl. We're gonna cube up the russets Main thing is you want it to be a very uniform shape. You don't want some pieces being a quarter inch and some pieces being a half a potato. So I'm going for about one inch chunks and this is just so the potatoes cook in a uniform manner. Okay, our potatoes are all cubed up. Next step is to put them in a pot of cold water, it could be room temperature, and then cook them from there. Once it comes up to heat, you just need to bring them to like a simmer, which is about 180 to 190 degrees. They don't have to be at a full boil because starch cooks below 212 anyway. Uh, so now that my potatoes have started off in cold water, once they come to a simmer, they'll probably cook for an additional 10 to 15 minutes. You know your potatoes are done when you could put a knife through one without much resistance. The fourth key step to making mashed potatoes that are really fluffy is after this process, I am going to rinse the potatoes off just really quickly over tap water just to remove some of that excess starch that began to come off the potato. Okay, it's been about eight minutes. We're going to test the potatoes. And that's pretty close. You definitely don't want it just like, you know, you shouldn't just be able to break them apart by pressing down on it. So I'm gonna take those off in about one minute. And you can see from my oven, I started preheating it. So I will rinse the potatoes. Once I take them off the stove, that'll rinse off some of the excess starch that's making this water cloudy. And then I will put the potatoes back in this pot and throw them in a medium hot oven for about 15 minutes, just to let some of that excess moisture evaporate away because that Excess water as you're mashing potatoes can lead to it having a more gluey type of texture. The potatoes are done, the water is strained. Next, I will rinse them off with some tap water just to remove some of that excess starch. The potatoes will go right back in the same pot we had them in, and I'll put them in the oven for about 15 minutes. Okay, that's a hot oven, cook for about 15 minutes. I melted my butter. I'm gonna add in my tablespoon of fresh garlic. The 
garlic just cooked in the butter for about one minute just to get rid of some of that raw garlic taste. Okay, our green onions are chopped up. About half of these green onions will get mixed into the potato. The other half will be put on top as garnish. If you can, but mashed potatoes are something that's great to do the last minute. You could have your potatoes already cubed up and just retaining them in cold water for a few hours, but it's best to do it right before you're going to eat them to get the, the best consistency. And you definitely want to mash them when they're still hot because when they, when they get cold, if you try to mash them then, they become more gluey. Okay, step five, we boil the potatoes and we put them back in the oven to remove excess water. You can see this is still hot, but no steam's coming off of it, so they're nice and dry. The next step is probably what I consider the most crucial, and that's to not overwork the potatoes. No matter what potato you decide to go with, you know, if you're putting in some Yukon Golds or doing it 100% Yukon Gold potatoes, you never want to overwork your potatoes. So you never want to put your potatoes in a food processor that beats the heck out of them and, and draws all that, breaks all those potato cells and draws out the starch and makes it really gummy. So you either want to use a potato masher, a hand potato masher, a ricer. I heated up the cream with the garlic and butter, so that's warm. The seventh step is I'm going to add the cream butter mixture to the potatoes. It's important to do it before you start mashing. When mashing the potatoes, the milk cream butter mixture, which all contain casein, reduces the amylose that leaks out of the starch granules. This leads to a smoother, more pleasing consistency. So we will put our cream butter mixture in there. I did salt the water as I was boiling. I'll add a little more salt here. And I would say when you're about halfway, what you think is about halfway through mashing the potatoes, taste it to see if you need to adjust the amount of salt and or black pepper. If you wanted to do something like put bacon bits, mix them in there, you could do this at this point. So I'm about halfway through the mixing process, so I'm gonna taste them. It's not bad, maybe just a tiny bit more salt. I'll put in my fresh ground black pepper. Always best to use fresh pepper. So that's looking really good. With a hand masher, you get a nice mashed potato, but you also get a few chunks of potato in there, which I think is kind of nice to have that difference of texture. If you want a ultra smooth mashed potato that's fluffy, a ricer works really good if that's the type of mashed potato you prefer. Now I'll mix in some of the green onions. These are looking really good. At this point, if you wanted to mix in some cheese, you could do that, or sometimes I prefer to put this in the casserole dish and then after sprinkle Parmesan cheese on top, whatever your heart's desire. All right, here's our finished mashed potatoes. And again, I think the most important thing is not to overwork the potato, no matter which potato you choose, and season it properly. So again, thanks for joining me. Now go out and cook for someone you love. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe.